back to Red Glasses Talks. We've been focused the last number of weeks on the subject of loneliness and isolation. And we're kind of going to wrap it all up today, but here are some of the things we've covered. We've covered causes of loneliness and isolation, um, why men and women uh, move into isolation and often stay there. Uh, what are some of the results of living a life in isolation? And then how do you move out of isolation? How do you beat it? And then uh, we said, this is how you get started. We had several weeks on how to move out, how to get started, how to put a, a few people around you together so you can begin to uh, build those friendships, relationships, and eventually beat isolation and loneliness. Now, here's the wrap up. The question is, what is the big overall purpose and issue of banding together with a few other people, a few other men, a few other women, and walking together uh, as followers of Jesus with a band of brothers or sisters. So here, so here we go. John 17, Jesus, the night before he goes to the cross, prays a prayer to his heavenly Father. And this is what he said. I'm only going to read part of it. You might want to take time to read the whole 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. But he begins in verse number 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Now, them is the disciples then, his 12 disciples. Really, there are only 11 now because Judas is out of the picture at this moment. Sanctify them by the truth. What does the word sanctify mean? The word sanctify means to set something aside for its originally designed purpose. So he says, sanctify the disciples by thy truth. Your word is truth. And then he says, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Now, he's, the world means not uh, uh, the big ball, uh, the earth, the planet. He's talking about a city, a community on the planet where people are who don't know Jesus. That's what he's talking about. I sent them into that environment. He said, I have sent them into the world, for them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Now listen to this. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. You know who that is? If you come to Jesus Christ and put your faith and trust in him or his follower, it's talking about you and me. When he prayed this prayer some 2,000 years ago, he literally had you and me in mind. Think about that. And that's going to cause you to pay a little more attention to what he's saying here because he had you and me in mind. He said, and this is really key. He said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, the disciples' message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, relationship with the Father and the Son, so that the world, the non-believers in your city, your community, may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them, you and me, may they be brought to complete unity. Why? To let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you love me. And so what he's saying here is the number one way, the number one way that we communicate to the community, the environment, whether it's the work, our neighborhood, our social clubs, whatever, that Jesus is the Son of God, lived, died, and rose from the dead, and loves them and wants a relationship with them, is by how we live out the faith with a few other believers. He said the matrix, now listen to this, the matrix, the matrix for impacting your community and the people in it for Christ is primarily focused on how believers relate to and get along with and grow together. 
We were never meant. There's no place in the Bible where it says, listen, just go it alone. Come to know Jesus, get your ticket points, and just go on your own and tough it out. He never says that. Everything leans towards building friendships and relationships that go deep so you're not alone and you're walking together. And so sometimes we think, well, maybe, maybe, you know, this thing about getting in a, a band of brothers or sisters and walking with a few and encouraging and challenging one another and all that, it's, it, it's, that's for me. Well, it is for you, but it goes beyond you and me to the world around us. So many of us as followers of Jesus do not have a picture and an understanding and a vision of the people around us in our community or where we are that are lost as a goose. Listen, you're either in Christ or out of Christ. You either have him in your life or you don't. If you don't have him in your life, you're in trouble. If you have him in your life, you're safe. So the question you need to ask is, am I willing to band together with a few believers to grow together, to encourage one another, to move out of isolation and loneliness, but for the greater purpose, that people will come to Jesus as they observe the model that we are living out every day together. I love in um, John 13, 34, and 35, Jesus says this, a new command I give you, love one another. And it's not a soft love. It's not just a pat on the back and a little hug. As I have loved you, has Jesus loved you? Whether you know him or not, or whether you get to know him hopefully someday, what did he do for you? He died on a cross for you. He died on a cross for you. That's what he did. And so he says, love one another as I have loved you. Sacrifice yourself. Care for other people more deeply. Quit just focusing on yourself. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love, tangible love for one another, living it out every day, caring for one another, getting the eyes on Jesus and getting them off of yourself all the time and focused on the relationships of people around you that know him and band together. And then through that, the message, the life, the passion of Jesus will shine and people will be drawn to him. So here it is. Men and women will be drawn to Christ by how they see you love one another. So I hope you'll go back over these red glasses talks the last number of weeks and listen to all the uh, different messages on loneliness and isolation. Uh, it won't take you long, but I hope you'll take notes, write it down, and begin to implement it in your life. Uh, if 5% of you do that, you will change the planet. So go get it.